good wine is made in the vineyard, and it, it's true that you want to start with the quality of the grapes you bring in out of the vineyard, but once we get those grapes into the cellar, the winemaker also has a hand, gets to play a little bit of, of artist with cha changing and crafting that wine as it develops. When you have a target of a style and you've got a palette in your head and you've got a palette for your taste and you've got a palette for your heart, maybe all those things that work together make a wine that everyone's going to appreciate. But first you have to start with the fruit. Once we bring the grapes in out of the vineyard, we put them in the refrigerator and chill them down overnight. And the next day, um, we bring them out and they head to the destemmer, the crusher destemmer, which pulls the berries off the stems. When we destem our reds, we run them all down the sorting table and we pull out anything that's in there that we don't want to be part of the fermentation process. So we're looking for chunks of the stems, which we call jacks because it looks kind of like the little kids game jacks. Um, and we also are looking for bugs, uh, stink bugs, ladybugs, anything like that that would impact the flavor of the finished wine. We're looking for rotten berries, we're looking for unripe berries, we're looking for leaves. And then um, from that point, the yeast is added to the entire, um, the grapes, the skin, everything it looks kind of like a big stew. And it ferments that way for 10 to 14 days. Alcohol is not the only byproduct of fermentation. We also get carbon dioxide. So a fermenting wine bubbles, kind of like a soda in a glass. As those bubbles come up through the fermenting wine, they grab those skins that are suspended in there and they carry them up to the surface with them. And it leaves the skins all kind of puffed up on the top in a big pillow of grape skins and carbon dioxide gas. So we go through two or three times a day and get a big homemade, we just use a PVC tool that we've built ourselves, it looks like a gigantic potato masher. And we get up on the side of this five foot bin and do what's called a punch down. And we just start pushing on it and get those skins all back down into contact with the fermenting wine. That's where we get the red colors of the red wine and the, uh, and the tannins from those skins. So that's a punch down and it's great for your biceps and your abs. Once that's done fermenting, then we take it and put it to the press and press it. From the press pan, it's pumped to a tank, settled for a day or two, and then moved to barrels for barrel aging. At that point, the wines just spend all of the winter and spring going back and forth from barrel to tank, tank to barrel, each time homogenizing the lot of wine so that we can get it from different oaks and different vineyard lots, get it together, get a good sense of where it is, and then going back into barrel for more barrel aging. And we begin our bottling process process in any right around February or March and we spend March, April, May, June, July, August moving wine back and forth and bottling those that, that are ready for bottling so that we have all of our tanks and barrels empty and ready to accept the incoming harvest when the whole cycle starts again in September. First and foremost the job of winemaker is janitor. You cannot make a good wine product if you are not clean. The most important tool that we have is a hot water power washer. All those microorganisms that make good wine, for every one of them, there's probably a gazillion other ones that want to eat that wine and make it turn bad. The natural progression of grape is not to make excellent wine, it's to make vinegar. And what we can do to stop that and bring out the other things that we really want to have depends completely on hygiene. There is a philosophy, there's, a, I will tell you that my philosophy is seat of the pants. It's here, as I tell everybody, here, here, and here, whatever, you know, and sometimes you just don't know. It's, well, I, it happens to me at least once or twice a week this time of year, is it, what should I do with this wine now? And you just do it. And if it turns out, it turns out. I've been really lucky that most of the time it turns out. And when it doesn't turn out, I've learned how to fix it because it's, I work for French people way, way too long to ever throw anything out. Um, by now you might have encountered our Tour de Franc. There's a blending um, adventure right there. The Tour de Franc actually started as a mistake. We uh, thought a tank was empty and it wasn't. We put Tor Toriga into it and it actually already had Cabernet Franc in it. And that's where you got our original Tour de Franc came from that accidental blending. The winemaker is not the only person who has a hand in, in making the wines. We actually uh, come up with, in our heads, what would be the perfect blend for, say, our house red. And uh, 
Then, since we don't always trust ourselves, we actually mock up three or four different options and take them upstairs into the tasting room and start pulling our regulars. It's not uncommon to find me on a Friday night with four bottles, and I'll just set down four glasses in front of you and say A, B, C, or D, and ask the customers to tell me which is their preference. And it very, very quickly falls into um, a, a trend starts almost immediately, and it's almost never the one that we thought it was going to be. So. Um, the, art, the artist and the winemaker, um, and then there's the consumer, and so we want everyone to have a word and say in it.